Hello everyone, welcome to Scardia.com. We are discussing gastric function test today and in this section we are going to discuss uh, how we can use pepsinogen as a determinant of um, um, uh, proper functioning of the um, stomach or the proper production of gastric juice. So serum pepsinogen is being used uh, to check or to determine the uh, proper functioning and once uh, dried serum is analyzed um, then we can have different interpretation depending on the type uh, or on the range of pepsinogen that is present in the gastric content. Um, there are different ranges for example there is a normal value which ranges from uh, uh, 30 to 160 unit per milliliter then in uh, pernicious anemia. So we are going to cancel out uh, all of these problems depending on the type of or the level of pepsinogen that is present. In pernicious anemia for example there is no serum pepsinogen um, present or is present in a very low quantity. So that actually helps us indicate uh, that a person can be suffering from anemia. In tutinal uh, ulcer there is an increase um, that is found in the serum pepsinogen often up to or above twice the upper limit of normal image. That is, you, the person can have about 160, 170 to maybe 300 uh, units per uh, milliliter of pepsinogen in the person's serum. If the serum pepsinogen is less than 80 units per mil, then it is considered that an ulcer is not present. But if it's more than, so if it's more than, um, uh, 80 or it can be you know it, even then if it's in the normal range that is normal range is still 160 but if it's usually it's usually less than 160 and so if it reaches up till 80 then the chance of ulcer are there but if it increases from 80 up till it can reach to 300 or 320 uh, and in that case, the, the chance that there is presence of liver, uh, uh, ulcer or especially duodenal ulcer is increased. So uh, pepsinogen help us determine if a person is suffering from any of these problems and how to nullify the problem. So, so far all the analysis that we have discussed in, involves a tube being inser inserted to, into a person's body. But there are certain ways through which we can analyze the gastric contents uh, without insertion of tube. Um, so the tubeless gastric analysis were developed by Siegel and co-workers who actually used a um, quininium resin, which is an indicator. So this resin can be given orally to the patients and hydrogen ion in the stomach could liberate the quinine ion and uh, uh, um, add a pH of less than, uh, a pH of greater than three. So it is absorbed in small amount in the intestine, uh, intestine and it can then be excreted in the urine. So this will just show the normal uh, functioning of gastric contents. Um, the quinine is extracted and then uh, from the urine and then it can be determined fluorometrically. So uh, what you're doing is, just to give you a gist, you're giving patient a raisin instead of inserting a tube in, in his mouth. And then um, since the raisin is, um, uh, can um, liberate the quinine ions, uh, if there is hydrogen ion, enough hydrogen ion present in the stomach, uh, at a pH of more than 3. So it will determine the stomach's pH. It will help us identify how much amount of uh, uh, hydrogen ion is being released because we can um, uh, see the absorbed quinine that is liberated uh, and excreted in the urine. And then you can just determine it uh, fluorometrically. Um, there are different ways through which we can actually modify this particular uh, procedure and then utilize it for our according to our needs. Um, uh, one of the modifications that has been done in this particular tubeless gastric analysis is the introduction of um, um, Diagnix Blue, which is a dye. It is prepared by reacting the carboclaric uh, cation exchange resin with azure A, which is an indicator. Uh, 
So you are combining two types of resins and indicators, and then hydrogen ion of the resin exchanged with the SORA ions. The reaction is reversed in the stomach when acid, if present, in a concentration given at a pH less than three. So again, uh, the reaction will be reversed only if there is acid present and only if the pH of the stomach is about three. So by the action of the acid, the indicator is or A is released, which is then absorbed by the intestine, uh, by the small intestine, and it is then excreted in the urine, color of which can be matched with the known standards. So you'll have known standards and um, the or A can be used as an indicator, and the color of the urine can actually help us identify the amount of acid that is being produced and the pH of the stomach. And, uh, and we can then actually determine if the acid that is being produced is uh, in the normal range or not. So moving on to the clinical significance of all of these, there are, these can be used as screening tests and they can show us the, for example, if you use the tubeless resin test, it, the positive result can indicate that acid is being secreted in the stomach. So the screen test can also help us determine the negative results, so which means that um, it's not a proper indication, so you cannot be uh, use this indicator as a reliable factor, but it can all can just give you an, a just an idea of uh, uh, a person suffering from a chloridias, and 50% of these cases secrete acid in response to penogastrin. Uh, so you can use all of these tests to um, uh, screen or to have a positive or negative analysis. These tests are not reliable in patients who are suffering already from renal diseases, urinary uh, retention, malabsorption, pyloric obstruction, and after um, gastrectomy and gastroenterostomy. Uh, uh, so uh, like I said, it's not that reliable a test, but it can uh, actually help you get into a direction that uh, okay what to do next what is the analysis that should be done next so the tests which involve tubes are more reliable in this case but these tests um, are being modified and are used for cer in certain cases for certain patients so in this section, we covered how we can use uh, pepsinogen as an indicator and see if enough stomach acid is being produced. Um, in our previous section, I have given you uh, lots of images that shows that what happens to your body if in not, not enough stomach acid is produced. So all of these indicators are just to identify if the stomach acid is being produced, if it's produced in the right amount, and if it's not produced, then you need to get treated right away. Uh, we also discussed the tubeless um, uh, tests, and we saw how we can use different resins and indicators that and dyes that can give us different colors in the urine, which can then be matched to a standard. Uh, the tests are not that reliable, especially in cases where patients are already suffering from different diseases, but can be modified and used, uh, especially in cases where a patient um, can have a very strong reflex to uh, the uh, tube that you insert in a person's body. So that's all we'll be learning in today's lecture. I hope you've learned enough about gastric function tests. Um, that's it for today. Thank you for watching Scadia.com.